I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets, except in amounts and conditions determined to be in the interest of monetary stability and in the best interest of the United States. In full cooperation with the International Monetary Fund and those who trade with us, we will press for the necessary reform to set up an urgently needed new international monetary system. Stability and equal treatment is in everybody's best interest. I am determined that the American dollar must never again be a hostage in the hands of international speculators. I'm taking one further step to protect the dollar, to improve our balance of payments, and to increase jobs for Americans. As a temporary measure, I am today opposed, imposing an additional tax of 10% on goods imported into the United States. This is a better solution for international trade than direct control on the amount of imports. This import tax is a temporary action. It isn't directed against any other country. It's an action to make certain that American products will not be at a disadvantage because of unfair exchange rates. When the unfair treatment is ended, the import tax will end as well. Hey guys, it's Digitech Lifestyle here. Well, that's what happened uh, back in 1970, I believe it was, and uh, the whole system has been corrupt ever since. Anyway, um, hope you guys are doing well, and uh, I just wanted to bring you this quick video and uh, basically link it back to what's happening today, and I think they've been playing this for quite some time, so hold on a sec. The G20 met, um, and this is from NASDAQ by the way, uh, uh, back in October 2022, uh, no, October uh, 22nd on, uh, in 2010. They've known about this stuff, been going on for over, I'd say 12 years now. Um, gold, um, this is entitled the Gold Update, Gold, uh, gold Corrects as G20 Meets to Discuss Competitive Devaluation and Currency Wars. <laughs> They've known about the currency wars that I'm going to link to when it comes to Russia. Hold on a sec. The G20 finance meeting will be dominated discussion on trading balances and disputes over currency valuation. Gold has been supported by growing concern that current uh, countries are pursuing weaker exchange rates as a route to stronger economic growth, either by limiting currency gains with in interventions like Japan, China and other currencies by or by extremely accommodative monetary policies policies as the us and the uk are doing us treasury secretary um are doing us uh, secretary Gaita, i believe that says will have his work cut out in convincing the chinese and some other nations that the us is not attempting to devalue the dollar and inflate away the mass li li liberties of the us actions speak speak louder than words and until the U.S. attempts to return to a more conventional monetary policy, emerging markets and other nations will be, will be concerned about the devaluation of gold reserve currency. Well, they gave the price of gold back then. I think that was in 2010. Right. Now, this comes back to where Russia is. They say Russia, Russia is suffering, um, according to Forbes, with regards to um, suffering from US and uh, EU sanctions. Russia has made a surprise move with its central bank fixed price of 5,000 5, uh, rubles to a gram of gold, or 500,000 maybe. And Western, and Western investors or executives noticed. They then go on to say Russia sprang its trap. Its finance ministry announced that it would require, require payment for oil and natural gas and other of other and other of its significant exports in rubles. What the Russians did was a genuine, genuine, a genuous hate to say. It explains Jack, whatever his name is. I'm going to do this again. No, I'm not going to bother doing that. No. 
you're gonna get what it is because I'm just being me. I can't. I'm not. Ugh. No. <laughs> Ruble has been trading in a range of seventy eight. Right, right. US companies that have either international supplies of other or kind of customers and could be jolted by Russia's golden move. Right, Russia's going back onto the gold standard. This is what Russia wants to do. And I think the whole world wants that. And I think it'd be better and fairer for everybody if if this is actually what happened. Um, right. This leads me on to the BIS and what they're saying about the future of money again. And um, at the heart of the monetary system stands a central bank. As a central bank issues mon money and maintains its core functional trust in the monetary system, it's ultimately grounded in trust and in the central bank. However, central bank does not operate in isolation. Commercial banks and other private payment services service providers pay PSP exist, execute the vast majority of payments up and other customers facing services. The division of roles promotes competitive and com competition and gives full play to ingenuity oh, and creativity of the private sector in serving customers. Indeed, private sector innovation benefits society precisely because it's built on the strong foundations of central bank. The problem with the monetary system, the central bank, yes, is great and all that kind of stuff. But the central banks at the moment, and if you look at what the Fed is doing, it ain't, I mean, are they a central bank? What are they? Who are they? Why, 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 is, why, are, why are things the way they are? They're supposed to be controlling stuff, yet they make all these mistakes. And we're seeing the dollar being devaluated as a result. You know, nobody wants to use it anymore because it's been used for bad things. It hasn't been used for the good. We need a gold back system. It's simple as that. Let me drink some water. So, with that possibly happening, and, uh, and this leads me on to where I really wanted to um, go with XRP and what what's happening with 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 what. Well, you know, with them, they've hired a couple of new lawyers. Um, where is it? Here. Ripple hires new lawyers as, as SEC lawsuit drags on. Fine, fair enough. The longer it drags on, the cheaper the, the cheaper well, the cheap the, the cheaper it is for you to get in at this level. The coin is just like thirty cents, so you know, just keep it at that level for me, please. You know. I'm quite happy for it not to move yet because it means that I can accum accumulate. Um, anyway, so you know things are happening. They're not backing down. They want a, a, a resolution to this case. Hopefully, it will be soon. We're having words coming up from Judge Net, um, the Netball, Judge Netburn, and what they what they want to move forward with. I think the hidden emails are going to be something discussed, but I'm not. 100% um, down with what, what was going on, but I know this case is going to come to an end sooner or later. I don't know when. I don't. I know. Well, everything has to end, right? Anyway, this I wanted to play you because this this is something that um, is is maybe possible long term, and it could be even shorter term. But still, you guys need to listen to this if you haven't seen it before. This is James Hall, and this is about the proposal for XRP to be sold or bought back from people who hold uh, XRP to sort of like maybe give them 10 to 35,000 per coin. Now uh, this is speculation, not financial advice and anything I say I do is not financial advice but it's entirely up to you what you want to do with this information. But this is a proposal that's been floating around, whether it happens or not, I don't know. But hey, let's check it out. Yeah. So we believe that uh, the, the last domino to fall on regulation right now is, is the SEC. Oh, sorry, guys. Listen to this clip for a couple of minutes, and we'll go from here. Uh, where do you feel that XRP, just, just based on your honest opinion, is going to hit, say, uh, a month after regulation? 
Yeah. So we believe that uh, the, the last domino to fall on regulation right now is is the SEC lawsuit, and that could that could be resolved in a variety of ways, but it could also be resolved in regulation coming in or over the top. Um, we know it's imminent, though, right? So when I say imminent, I, I, I would be surprised if if a quarter from now we're really still embroiled. In the, uh, in the SEC lawsuit, because I think the, the, the state of affairs throughout the world is, is such that we're going to need a solution like an XRP for liquidity purposes sooner rather than later. Uh, so the question is then, okay, we've magically resolved it. Uh, where, does, where does the price go? It's, it's easy uh, uh, to project that, it, that it's a double-digit number. So, you know, I think it immediately shoots up to a $10, potentially $20. Uh, the wild card to me is that there is actually a deal to be done among the central banks and, and governments to basically have XRP work as the, the world's bridge currency, neutral, a neutral asset that could be traded between the central banks to move a specific type of fiat to another type of fiat. Um, if if that's what occurs, uh, it's back to what we were discussing earlier. It's got to cover kind of all the money. And I think you're looking at a range that XRP would settle on agreement. So this would happen instantaneously, somewhere between $10,000 and $35,000 a coin. And uh, our lives will, will be, you know, maybe the same, maybe different. I don't know. Guys, it's due to my style here. Again, with another piece of um, information regarding this is just a piece of um, stepping on from what um, Val has done, and, and, and it's an update on what's happening today. Going back from uh, when the first video that he recorded with uh, James Raw, and I think they've made some um, very important and um, very in depth um, things that they're discussing here. Um, you guys want to go follow them, they're on the chain, um, they are very big, you guys should follow them because they, they, they do some deep dives on what's going on with the XRP ledger and everything else. I'm just bringing you a little bit of news here when I can and what I understand. They have a much more in-depth um, perspective, so follow them as well, you know, take care. Anyway, let, 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 let me um, play this. First question that we put in the uh, in our in our list here, the number one question that people have. Chip, we're starting with the number one. It should go like top ten. It's just, but yeah, the number, number one, one question brrr. that people have is why would the Fed pay thousands of dollars later when XRP is under a buck now? And I think that that's an interesting place to start because it puts us like right into the conversation. Yeah, well, it's an excellent question. Uh, and, and, and you got to kind of unpack the whole the whole deal, what was behind, you know, making a proposal to the Fed at that time. I'll try to encapsulate that quickly. Uh, when the lawsuit was filed and Chairman Clayton left the next day, there was immediate, um, you know, kind of red flags, what's going on here? Uh, it was super weird. You had a lot of other, uh, the, the enforcement attorneys were leaving. Uh, and, and the disclosures we started to have over that first part of 2021 uh, really were, they were looking curious to someone like myself who had, you know, practiced security law, uh, was, was observed in this lawsuit, thought, thought that the case, um, we, we had precedent preceding the case that said XRP was not a security. So the whole thing seemed super weird. And um, as the SEC continued to kind of do, kind of engage in delay tactics, we became very concerned that uh, we would not be able to get justice out of the court system, okay? And so it, it, it's, it, when you start to think about it from that perspective, uh, we became very concerned that ultimately the federal government would try to nationalize or take the, the, the XRP or take control of the XRP ledger in some manner. So we wanted to have a valuation 
of XRP on the record in case something like that occurred in the future. Um, so we we initially uh, came up with terms. It's basically, I don't, I don't know if you guys have, have had an opportunity to read the term sheet, but it's set up in a, in a, in a, in a structure just like a public-to-public M&A transaction is, is set up, where instead of having a transfer agent, in our transaction, we have a liquidating agent, okay? This was going to be one of the big banks, a big trust company, um, maybe maybe Polysign, Standard Charter, J.P. Morgan, so, someone like that that would stand in. And what happens in a, in a public merger deal is once the deal is announced, um, the transfer agent then takes in the securities and when they receive it, it's converted in the merger into the right to receive the consideration in the transaction, right? So uh, we had the liquidating agent basically sitting in the same function of as the XRP for the people that wanted to tender into the deal, to the extent they, they would turn it in, that would become the right to receive the consideration. Uh, it was around that time, I'd say we worked on it, the, the terms, for a couple of oh, weeks. Oh. And we knew that it didn't really matter what anybody at Bow Hill had to say about the value or what the consideration should be. We saw ourselves standing in the shoes of a reasonably prudent XRP token holder. So we, we basically formed, we didn't have, we basically formed a special committee. Uh, not unlike if you were in a public company, you would go to your board, maybe some of the people in the board are interested in the transaction. You have to form some subset of the board. We call that a special committee. So what we formed is a confidential committee of about 20 professionals. Uh, these were lawyers. Uh, we have a forensic accountant. We had uh, 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 James Rule was on there. Uh, but we had a bunch of different people representing a bunch of different uh, backgrounds, all professional people, but um, all also XRP token holders. And um, we, we basically went through a valuation process with them. We vetted the terms with them uh, and made, you know, ended up making a lot of changes. There were, um, you know, there, there were things we had. The, the biggest change we made was our approach. We wanted to do this in a public bear hug type process. And for those of your you know listeners aren't familiar with a bear hug, you know, it's kind of what Elon Musk did to Twitter, right? He kind of brought it back. This used to happen in the 80s and the takeover wave all the time that um, a, a person would make an offer, they would call the CEO of the company, the target company, and say, we think we should buy your company for X dollars per share. Um, and effectively, once they got off the phone, once the person said, you know, screw you, I'm not selling or whatever, they would then release a letter that was effectively to, to the management and let the world know that they've made this, this offer. So the, the, the matter is then kind of tried in the court of public opinion about whether the deal should happen or not. And that was, that was the approach we wanted to take initially. Uh, there were members of the confidential committee that thought um, that would be uh, not prudent, uh, that it would create, you know, um, unreasonable stress in a, in a deal that might be able to get done privately. Um, but um, so we, we ultimately, uh, we agreed to, 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 to take the path that the uh, the members of the confidential committee uh, uh, suggested the value. Uh, there, there's a there's a lot in the value. First of all, there's um, there's four elements of consideration in the proposed transaction. Only one of them is kind of a price per token. There's also uh, there's these um, uh, uh, the, the the ability to retain your airdrop rights, and we call it an airdrop residual right which we would basically fork somehow the XRPL into those rights would be retokenized into another type of a token that those tendering shareholder token holders would get to, get to keep. 
there was a debt forgiveness for the participants, uh, kind of all debt, and there was a, uh, a tax holiday that applied to each uh, token holder and their, um, their descendants. The reason we did that, uh, those, those elements of the consideration, is because we viewed the federal government in being in the situation that has since that time, we initially proposed the transaction in September of 2021. We had a follow-up in October, late October. Um, but at that time, we already were convinced that the world was going to look like what it looks today and that it was going to start breaking down into currency blocks. There was going to be a push to go back to some type of a gold standard, uh, which to us is a euphemism for just an asset-backed currency system. Um, and that the people who had made that possible by not only having the foresight to invest in this technology before, you know, people had done the homework, done the research, figured it out, and had made the investment. But in addition, at this time, they had held for nine months while, you know, having uh, basically a lawsuit filed against them by the federal government. So uh, you had kind of, you know, uh, you know, the movie Shawshank Redemption, where he crawls through the tunnel and the, the, the filth, you know, the filth and all that stuff. And, you know, Morgan Freeman says, I can't even imagine the stuff that these people had to, the stuff he went through to get out the other side and be free. We view the people who have lived through this as going through a very similar type of crucible process, and they should be compensated for that. So that's what really those elements were about. Um, the price, uh, we had a lot of information about, uh, about, well, we had information that there were deals that were being done off ledger that were far in excess of what the market value is, okay? Number one. Number two, we had information that, um, um, sorry, lost the parents out there, uh, that, that, um, that there was a, a limit, there was less actual retail holders of XRP than, uh, than we are led to believe by the market cap and the float in XRP. Uh, so we, we believe at that time, and we believe it might be less now, that only somewhere between half a percent and two percent of the whole hundred billion is actually held by retail. And that the, the vast majority is already held by Central banks, large commercial banks, hedge funds, you know, very large financial institutions that are preparing to use it after whatever is supposed to occur occurs, the event. So it, it wasn't, you know, people were very quick to say, oh, you know, the 37.5 or 25,000 times, you know, uh, 48 billion, that's, that's like this eye popping. It is eye popping. Even at, even at 2 billion, it's, it's quite eye popping. But um, we didn't think that that was uh, that's what the transaction would be. We thought the transaction was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of um, you know no more than about fifty trillion dollars, which you know will be the largest M and A transaction ever to occur in the history of the world that we're aware of. But um, but wasn't really but wasn't you know uh, as extensive as um, as people were saying. Yeah, the reason. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and one last thing: this is why I um, I am buying um, gold on my phone. Yes, you can do that uh, with green gold. Um, I'm buying like ten dollars, ten ten pounds here, ten pounds there. It's not an awful lot, but it's somewhere to start. Um, it will be something to look at in the future. Not financial advice, but all these little things make a big difference going forward when you think about what's going on in the world. XRP could be something of great value long term. That they're doing the plumbings, they're they're doing everything they can to make XRP what it should be going forward. When you look back on what um, Jimmy Fowler said and how they um, are looking at the whole the whole market and stuff like that. Not all of it will be on XRP. Um, there are, are other technologies out there, like what, when I showed a video about the World Economic Forum, what they're doing, 
and the different tokens that they have XLA, IOTA, ADA, um, XDC, um, HBAR are all being uh, the ones that are going to be utilised and you have to remember as well and I really seriously think about this those companies out there that are offering the 3% and they're not really companies they're just fabricated uh, businesses that are stealing the money and they're not regulated those are not the ones you want to be invested in uh, and thinking about the 2,000 coins out there you don't want to be touching half of those let alone any of them but in, in, in the, 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 in, in the um, unless they're in the top 100 I would say Brad Gardner has said this before there will be only uh, a percentage of them, I think 2% he reckons, so that's like 20 coins, at, what 200, actually 200 coins, not the whole lot, and they will be the ones that have use case, they will be the ones that have value, they will be the ones that make changes, they are the ones that are being built today, that are going to change the world for tomorrow. So, with that said, just that lifestyle out, hope you enjoyed the video, Give me a like, give me a subscribe, whatever you want to do. Even if you don't like it, I don't care. <laughs> Just be you. I'm being me. All right, take care. Bye. Oh, take you, take your crypto off exchanges. Very important things are happening in that market. Yeah, links in the description if you want to get involved. If you don't, whatever. All right, take care.